Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on number of good pairs. And in this problem you're given an array of integers, nums, and you want to return the number of good pairs. A pair is called good if nums i equals nums j and i is less than j. So for example, we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, and the good pairs here are, if we index these, 0, 1, 2, so the numbers have to be the same, right? So 0 and 3 are good pairs, 0 and 4 are good pairs, and 3, 4 are good pairs, and also 2, 5. So that's 4 pairs. So there's 4 here, and then in 1, 1, 1, 1, there are 6, and in 1, 2, 3, there are 0. So pretty much what you have to notice in this problem is what you really need are how many numbers are there that are of each number. So for example, let's just go through this like one, 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 one. Like how did we get a six, right? So we have one, 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 one. Like how is that a six? So we can manually write it out first just to get an idea. So let's just try to manually get every pair. So it has to be every pair and J has to be greater than I. So let's just go pair by pair. So we have zero, one is a pair, 0, 2, 0, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. And these are all the pairs that i is less than j, right? But, and so you can't actually do this. You can literally just get, you can go through this, get a count of every number. And then for every number, you don't even need to know the number. You, all you need is a count. You can figure out how many pairs there are. So there is actually a, I always forget if it's combinations or permutations, but there is an equation to do this. So you, you pick two elements and n is the total you have. So let's say you have four. So it would be something like n factorial over n minus k factorial and then over k factorial. So let's kind of try that. So n here would be four elements. So it would be four factorial over n minus k factorial. So k is two elements. So we have four minus two factorial two factorial, well, let's see what that is, right? So four factorial over two factorial over two. So that's just four and four factorial is four times three times two. So four times three times two over four, and we get six. So you could do this, but the problem with this is, I mean, this actually does work and the space complexity will actually be the same as a hash map. And so if you wanna code this up, you could, but the only thing is for factorials, you're gonna do repeated work. So like, let's say you get like eight factorial and then you get eight factorial and you get eight factorial again. So if you do want to do this, you would want to make another hash map of all possible factorial values, one through the length of your array and then memoize that. So you would get a hash map of all factorial values and all the counts of these. And that would totally work. But instead, let's actually go through another way of how we could do this one, 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 one. And we can kind of see how this works. That's like a little clever trick instead of doing this factorials. So notice that we are going to maintain a count. But as we go through every element, whenever we get a new element, what we can just figure out like what new pairs does that element give us, right? So we're going to have a result here. It's going to be easier to start out. And we're just going to say for every new element, what new pairs does that give us? So for zero, it doesn't give us any new pairs because our count of ones. So let's also maintain a count of ones. So for now it's one after this one, so this one doesn't give us anything. How about this one? So here we would add a one. Now we would have two ones, right? But before we add this, how many new pairs does this one give us? Well, it's the old count of numbers that we had. We can take any one of those and add this one to it, right? So if we had three ones and we get a new one, we can just have any one of those three with this one. So the number of new pairs that each element gives us is, we can write that down, number of new pairs that each new element gives is number of old pairs, or not, not number of old pairs, number of old, or old count, I guess, old count of that number. So this one can only give us one pair because there was only one, and that's correct, right? We can only get zero, one. This one will only give us a one so far. So we're gonna update our result to be one, and then we're gonna actually update our count of ones to be two now. So we're gonna update that to be two, and then we're gonna go to this index and we're gonna see, okay, 
What was our old count? Two. That means this two can give us two new pairs. And let's find out what new pairs it can give us from the old stuff we have. Well, we can get zero, two, or one, two, right? So this two does give us two new pairs. And if it gives us two new pairs, this should actually be updated to a three, right? It was once, so now we get three. Now we want to update our count here. We have three ones, so let's do that. So we go here. And then now for this one, we want to do the same thing. So we want to say how many ones were there? There were three. So this one will give us three new pairs. So we'd update this to be a six. And is that true? Well, yeah, because you can get zero, three, you get one, three, two, three. So this does indeed give us three new pairs. And so that's kind of like the trick is for every new number, the new pairs that it contributes is the old number. And you just keep adding it. So if it's the first number, it doesn't contribute anything, but anyone past that will contribute the old count number of pairs. And then you just update the count to be a uh, plus one. So now we can actually go through this one, two, three, one, one, three as well to kind of see that in action as well. So let's do that. So one, two, three, one, and yeah, originally I did code this up with a factorial, but then uh, I saw that you can actually do this with this little trick. Uh, but the time, the time and space would be the same with the factorial if you want to do a factorial as well. You just have to memorize the factorial. Okay, so let's uh, do it for this one. So our result is gonna be easier to start and we're gonna have some kind of hash map over here of our counts. So let's call that C. Okay, so we're gonna go to this one and we're going to say, okay, well, we don't have any ones, so we just need to add a one here. The first, the first element will never give us any pairs. Okay, now how about over here? This is the first two, doesn't give us any pairs. Okay, how about over here? First three doesn't give us any pairs. Okay, now we're at a one, and we have a one already. So this one will give us one new pair because we had one in here. So now this result gets updated to one. And that is correct, right? We do get one pair with this one. It would be zero, three. Then we update our count of ones to two. So this is going to be two now. Okay, now we come over here. And what's our old count? It's two. So we're going to get two new pairs from this one. So this is going to get updated to three. And that is also correct. We can get two new pairs. We can get zero, four, or three, four, right? And but I mean, what I mean by new pairs is pairs that actually use this number. Then we update our count over here again, two, three. And then we come over here and we have a three already. So this will give us one more new pair as well. So this gets updated to four. So this gets updated to four and then we will update our count of threes to two. And this three does indeed give us a new pair because we get a pair of index two and index five. And so our result should be four. And if we scroll up, uh, our result is four indeed. So that's pretty much all you do is you just for every new number, you just check how many are there before. And if there's at least one, then that's how many new pairs you add. And then you update the count and finally you return the result. So pretty straightforward. With the factorial, not so straightforward. And there are other ways that are slower, but this, these are the O of N solutions. So now we can code it. So we're gonna have result, we're gonna have a count, and we can just go through all our numbers. So for num and nums, we can say if num in counts, then let's update, then let's add whatever that count is into the result. So res plus equals counts num. And let's actually add one to the counts of the number. Otherwise, let's just make the counts of the number one because this is the first time we've seen it. And finally, let's return the result. And that's pretty much it. So let's see if we screw anything up. Looks like we did not submit. And you can see it's all over the place again, but it's pretty efficient. I think I did have it like 99%, just gotta click enough times. But yeah, essentially, let's just keep clicking. There you go. Okay, anyway, so it's kind of all over the place and everyone's gonna have kind of the same solution. So let's talk about the time and space for this one. So for the time, we are looping through every number. So that's O of N, right? And we are checking if it's in nums, but these are all, all these things in the for loop are O of one. And for the space, we did create a hash map. So worst case scenario, all these numbers are unique and then our space would be O of N, right? Like if our array was just one through whatever the length of the array is, that would be O of N. And yeah, so it's a nice little trick to learn how to actually modify the, uh, the combinations in place as opposed to calculating it afterwards because calculating it afterwards is gonna be slower with factorials. And yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this problem. So if you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.